Mission Canada show brought to you in part by New Brunswick, always inviting. Princecraft Boats, the spirit of boating. And Garmin, plot your paradise, reel them in. Hi everyone and welcome to this week's Fishing Canada episode. For this show, we're going to a place we've been to before, but we're adding a bit of a twist. Normally you see just Ange and I in most Fishing Canada shows. Yes, Steve and Nick sub in occasionally and the odd time we even feature a fishing guide. On this show, however, we've done something completely different. Earlier in the year, well before our shooting season even started, we attended the Eric Lindros Celebrity Hockey Classic. This is an annual event that raises all kinds of money for Easter Seals Canada. Eric is a class act. How we got involved was, while interviewing Eric on an Outdoor Journal radio podcast, he mentioned his charity event and asked if maybe Fishing Canada would like to get involved. We quickly responded with a yes. Pete and I mulled over ideas as to what we could do to best contribute to the event and came up with a live auction giveaway for two people to be our guests on a Fishing Canada episode. And to hit it right out of the park, our destination will be New Brunswick's Miramichi River to compete in the Miramichi Striper Cup. Now how's that for a prize? And when all was said and done, Ben Logan and Curtis Eboy from Peterborough, Ontario were the highest bidders in our live auction package. Their generous donation not only helped the Easter Seals Foundation, but it also got them return airline travel to beautiful New Brunswick, full accommodations and meals at the Rod Miramichi, a chance to go pre-fishing with Ange and I, and of course, an entry into the 2023 Miramichi Striper Cup event. All expenses paid. The city of Miramichi, the largest city in northern New Brunswick, is located close to the mouth of the Miramichi River where it enters Miramichi Bay. You couldn't pick a more perfect waterfront location to build a city. It has a population of over 17,000 people, whom, by the way, in typical East Coast fashion, are some of the nicest folks you'll ever meet. The city of Miramichi was formed in 1995 through the forced amalgamation of two towns, Newcastle and Chatham, as well as several smaller communities nearby. The Miramichi area's economy is partially focused on mining, forestry, tourism, and of course, fishing. This used to be an Atlantic salmon mecca. However, lately, it has become one of the most productive striped bass fisheries along the entire North American East Coast. And speaking of striped bass, well, that's exactly why we are here, to compete in the annual Miramichi Striper Cup. This one-of-a-kind fishing tournament is run by New Brunswick fishing fanatic and good friend, Jeff Wilson. Damn, you're looking good Damn today. <laughs> Jeff has been fishing tournaments for years and knows the do's and don'ts of these large-scale events. And man, has he ever done a great job with this one. From organization to finding volunteers to building a massive competitor base and, of course, to pulling in an array of amazing prize packages, this tournament is like no other. Honestly, you don't just come here to try and win. It's the entire experience that will keep you coming back year after year. The Miramichi Striper Cup has been running since 2015 and has experienced tremendous success. What started out as a fun idea has now turned into a huge success. With contestants from New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, PEI, Newfoundland, Quebec, Ontario, Alberta, and even a few from the US. They're all chomping at the bit in anticipation of hitting the Miramichi and seeking that rewarding first place finish along with an array of prizes totaling some Those of you who have not fished in a competitive tournament, you need to realize it's more than just catching fish. 
It's the hype beforehand. It's getting up early with a ton of nervous jitters. It's launching the rig before daylight hits. It's sitting among fellow competitors, 224 of them here this morning, bobbing around, jockeying for position while waiting for the blast off. For some of us, it just may be the most exciting part of this entire event. Modern day tournaments normally use what's referred to as a trickle start, but Jeff has gone old school with the Striper Cup in having a blast off. And man, what a rush it is. It combines the best of boat racing and fishing all in one. Who will get to the number one spot first? Well, it's all in the hands of the drivers and their boats. Make the wrong move or misjudge your course and you could be left behind, far behind. And that could lead to somebody else getting to our fish first. Trust me, it's happened many times. Not only to us, but probably to anybody who's ever entered a high-end event. Now, as for our new teammates, well, these boys are in for a treat. But before we can transform them into striper annihilation mode, we needed to top up their skill level. Ange loves teaching people how to use bait casting gear, an essential tool while fishing for big, burly striped bass. Curtis and Ben both got on to bait casting like it was second nature. It was obvious to me that they had previous fishing yes. experience, and being two Peterborough boys, they've probably been fishing their whole lives. Now it's time to cover as much water as possible and try and seek out schools of bigger than average size stripers. It would be so nice to find an area full of 10 to 15 pounders, but quite honestly, these fish move so much that what we find today could well be gone tomorrow. He's a keeper. Oh, oh yeah, you got on the center. Oh, I had that one filleted already. Oh. It does it, it just goes subsurface. Nice work, bud. Just a little one. Nice nice job, Benny. Thanks. Sing that guy. Good work, buddy. Yeah, you grab it. Just like it. a bass, eh? There you go. Just say. like a bass. There, there you go. go. Kiss him. Want to kiss him? No. Yes. <laughs> no kiss him. <laughs> I don't kiss him, Tom. Okay. Good stuff, All buddy. right. Good, Good job, work, buddy. As with all tournaments that Pete and I have fished, there's always the Friday night registration to take place. Not only is it necessary to solidify your entry to the event, but it's a great time to look around at sponsor products as well as the prize packages. And of course, to meet your fellow competitors. So here we are in the wee hours of the morning, coffees in hand and launching the boat. There's a few launches around which everyone split up to use, and thankfully so. With 225 boats, that's a lot of launching. And now we wait in anticipation of the blast off. Our game plan is set and we need to execute. We found a few schools of stripers, but no big ones. Hopefully a new wave of fish will push through and we intercept them.
Okay, so let's, before we put him in, let's see what the smallest one is in there, and we'll get rid of it. Yeah, put him in. Let me get the net. Yep. Thank you. No, he's not that big. Did you oh, see him take yeah. off in that car? He's, he's, he's going to be the biggest of the day. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yes, sir. Nice. I thought he's bigger than that, boy. OK. Nice. We'll get rid of Whew. the last little one. How we got? You got it, Pete? Yep. Oh, nice fish. Is it a good one? Oh, yeah. yeah. Didn't look good, but he felt good. Yeah, good. <laughs> he crashed me. Oh, that's a good one. OK, good. You got it? I got the end. That's the biggest one yet. Oh, yeah. So I believe this is the smallest. Yep. Right here. That one's small. Yep. Yeah. Woo! Right, yeah. Here, let's get a picture. Yeah. There you go, boys. We'll put them in for now. Close. Just, do you remember the weight of the uh, one, that, the one that's in there? 313. 313. This is very close no. to that. I don't think so. Boys, that's not a 313, okay? No. We can all tell, agree that? Yeah. With very little time left on the clock, it's time to make the boat ride back to the weigh-in area. Most tournament anglers leave very little spare time here. It's balls to the wall and push it to the limit. Since Jeff has a two-fish limit in the Striper Cup, you would think that getting the limit would be a piece of cake, right? <laughs> Remember though, fishing is fishing. When you deal with Mother Nature, she can sometimes play nasty in the sandbox. Luckily, we had our two fish limit on day one, and both Angie and I really wanted the boys to experience the weigh-in procedure. From pulling up to the dock, to bagging the fish, to walking up to the weigh master, to reading the weight, and then getting to have to chat with the tournament director and getting pictures taken. It really is an awesome feeling, almost like everyone's a winner. Well, day one's in the can, and guess what? We get to do it all over again. The second tournament day for me, and I'm sure I speak for Pete as well, has a more relaxed feel to it. Yeah, there's still the crazy blast off and the will we catch some fish, and if so, can we find some big ones going on? But with a day behind us, there's a better sense of calm among us. I just hope Kurt and Ben are still as pumped as yesterday. This episode's hotspot is a somewhat steep shoreline that drops into the depths of the Miramichi River. The waypoint on your screen gets you there. We continuously cast weightless, soft plastic jerk baits in the area, and it paid off. Remember, striped bass move way up in the water column to strike a bait. Meaning, even though you're fishing in, let's say, 25 feet of water, your bait that's just under the surface is still extremely effective. Stripers move up and down in seconds, and the strikes can be incredible. 
We like to use braided line for powerful hook sets, but you can use fluorocarbon or even monofilament. That's totally up to you. And one last point, this area is 100% barbless. Make sure you're fishing legally. For more hotspots like this one, check out fishingcanada.com. We're finding day two to be much tougher than day one, which is quite typical in tournament fishing. We normally go to all of our best stuff right off the bat and then work down from there. Since our day one was only mediocre in our total weight, it means we really put the pressure on all of our potential areas. And remember, we're not the only ones at this event. Another full day on the same spots, we need all the luck we can get. Boy, he ate that, look at that, he just ate it. Don't pull too hard. You have to back it out. If you have to pull that hard, you have to back it out. There you go. Oh, you're you're like your your horse is real good. You gotta set the hook. Yeah, there you Slow go. Down. Nice pull. Then is he is he coming in at all? Little guy. Yeah. Small. That's a nice fish. It's not going to make it, but it's a nice fish. It's not bad. It's not going to help us, but good job, bud. Very nice. Hey, you want me to get him? You want to get him? You worked for that one. There it is, you have that hard. There you go. She, he's got her good in there. Look That's that. perfect. Right in the so you gotta go around. Yep, there you go. Okay. Good job, bud. Yeah, All right, you didn't, nice. did you show the camera? Yeah. You showed it, yep. Atta boy. That's an upgrade. Oh boy. <laughs> got yeah. that inch? Woo! That's an upgrade. No, that's an upgrade, boys. Ooh, he fell out too, eh? <laughs> the strongest <laughs> ball ever. See? That's a good size. Nice. That's better. For sure, that's the upgrade, eh? Yeah, this one's got something in its mouth, eh? Yeah, that's the tag. I got a tag. Grab him right by that tag. Don't leave that open because oh, that big one will jump out. Get him out? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's way bigger. Oh, yeah. For oh, sure. Yeah. Ow! Easy, easy. Don't hurt yourself. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Open people. the box. Open the box. Please. Thank you. I got him. That's the biggie. With the final weigh-in and all competition done, now comes the big gala of the event. The piece de resistance, if you will. The prize presentations and closing ceremony. Just as the opening ceremony was a couple of days ago, this certainly is a breathtaking event. It is so rare to get a crowd this large at any Canadian fishing tournament. But here at the Cup, this place is packed. And it's packed for a good reason. Not only the prizes for the best catches to be given out, but there's an array of door prizes as well. 
And of course, the main reason everyone is hanging tough with great anticipation, the biggest draw prize of them all, a fully rigged boat, motor, and trailer package. As long as you enter the tourney, you have as good a shot as anyone else to win. That's insane, and that's awesome. Congratulations to each and every prize winner, and a big kudos to all who participated. And I don't just mean the participants, I mean the entire staff, the city of Miramichi, all who volunteered, and of course, the man himself, Mr. Jeff Wilson. Well done, brother. Getting there. Brought to you by the Outdoor Journal Radio Podcast Network. To get to today's wild striped bass action, we first traveled east through Ontario on Highway 401. We next hit Quebec and took Highway 20 to Highway 30 and eventually got back to Highway 20. Next, we turned southeast on Highway 85. Once in New Brunswick, we took Highway 2 east and then drove north on Highway 8 at Fredericton. We finally took 117 into the town of Miramichi, a left on Henderson Street and on to our final destination at the Rod Miramichi Hotel. This modern day facility is the absolute perfect home away from home for the traveling angler. The accommodations are excellent, the food outstanding, there's a boat launch a block away, and you can literally fish for stripers directly adjacent to the property. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Yozuri Fishing Lures, fish the best. Mercury Outboards, go boldly. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. Closed captioning for this episode is brought to you by FishingCanada.com, the gateway to your next fishing adventure. Come along to our cabin in the wild, cause we're in for some good fishing in Canada. 